welcome back to Doodling with Purpose, lesson 17. Now at this point, there's a really cool thing you can start doing, well, you may have already been doing this, is try watching a whole bunch of sort of kind of history channel or National Geographic documentaries about ancient Egypt. One, it's really great to get a background on the culture and you'll learn a lot, but what's really cool is at this point in the course, you're going to start to really recognize a lot of the hieroglyphs that are on the walls and on the tombs and all of the shots. It's even fun to kind of freeze frame and pick out the ones you know. It's a really great exercise and it can be very kind of fulfilling. Or, you know, watch something like this, like the uh, Brandon Fraser mummy movie. Same thing, the hieroglyphs are real in that movie and actually say things. All right. So, with that little tip out of the way, it is time for review. We're going to jump in and take a look at the three hieroglyphs that we learned last week. All right, so first we have the Ibis, which starts off as the skybird, long neck, the eye, the legs down, something to stand on, and then we'll add a little wing detail there, and then an eye so he could see. All right, next up we have the Papyrus which we do our little Bart Simpson there. And then three lines up, one, two, three. Three triangles at the top, one, two, and three. And then again, the detail inside of the papyrus flower, we do a little Bart Simpson there. And then three lines, one, two, and three. All right, I'm just gonna do a quick version here with the detail in the flower. Obviously, you can do this and take more time. And then finally, we are going to do the club which is down, and a triangle for the base. All right, so now our new ones. Now, we all know the N from way back in an earlier lesson, which is wavy water, or sometimes it's thought of as energy lines. And when I refer to Bart Simpsoning, Simpsoning as in like the verb to Bart Simpson, what I'm talking about is the hair on top of his head. This is a very common motif in a lot of glyphs, including what we just saw with the papyrus and with water, is kind of doing those up and down. So the glyph that we are about to do is a well, the glyph that represents an Egyptian well. Not, not really this well when you think of a well, more like this well, like a big giant pit that just goes down to the bowels of the earth, because that's what the wells were like in ancient Egypt. And to represent a well in a hieroglyph, it was done kind of like a basket of water. So let me show you what that looks like. It's going to make the H M sound, like a hmm sound, like as if you were humming. All right, so here is how to draw the well. First we do a loop, and then we do a Bart Simpson at the top, and then another Bart Simpson, and then a third Bart Simpson. Basically three wavy lines of water. So we do our U, we do a Bart Simpson at the top, and then two more across the middle, which represents water inside of the well one more time. First we're going to do a U, like an English U, and then wavy line of water across the top. Now there's no rule on how many peaks and valleys. Usually you want to do about five or six. Um, I'm going to be a little sloppy here, but that's how you do the well. Next up, we are going to do another club. Call this the, uh, the mummy club. Okay, well some people say it's a club looks a little bit less like a club and maybe a bit more like an ancient Egyptian bat. It's a little hard to tell because obviously, you know, things were, were different in how they did tools back then, whether it's a bat or it's a club. What you're drawing is this. This is the actual tool that we're drawing. This was used to flatten papyrus uh, and help beat it out, if you will. It was not used to hurt people. It was a, it was a gardening tool. And it also makes the hmm sound. It's more like in the back of the like hum sound. All right, and this is how to draw it. It's to a sort of a half squiggle up, squiggle down, and back. Up and down and back. And that's your bat or your club. All right, last for today, we are gonna do a papyrus herb. This is the very top of the papyrus plant. Papyrus, obviously very big in ancient Egypt. It was all over the place in the Nile, and it was basically a way of life. And this one is going to be similar to the one we did last week. It's the HN sound now. The HUN sound is what we're doing. And if you got last week's papyrus, this one's not going to be too much different. Except this time, instead of a base, we're going to be drawing like kind of the stick of the plant. 
and then those familiar triangles up, three of them, and it's the same inside detail with the Bart Simpson and the three lines, just like last week. So this one, it's basically just instead of drawing the base of the plant, you're drawing the stem. Three lines, kind of like a trident, with the first one being a squiggle to the left, and then we're going to do the detail. This one is a little better than my one on the left. It's got more of a curve. All right, let's see if I can do it again. They always come out a little different. All right, there we go. Yes, it's supposed to be more kind of like that. All right, and then three triangles, and we'll do our Bart Simpson, our three lines, Bart Simpson wavy water, Bart Simpson wavy water, and there you go, your papyrus herb. All right. I absolutely encourage you to check out online resources to get some free printable hieroglyph flashcards or honestly make your own with index cards. It's actually good because then you're drawing the glyph on one side and the sound it makes on the other. And honestly, making them yourself is not only more rewarding, but it actually helps really imprint how to do this a lot more than just picking up someone else's flashcards. So yeah, I mean, just grab some index cards and kind of draw out all of the glyphs you've done so far. Next week, we will continue our deep dive into the bilateral signs. That's the signs with two consonants. Well, I guess an Egyptian dive would probably look more like this because you'd be diving in the sand, right? Not the water. The Nile's not that deep, and I guess if you're taking a dive in Egypt, you're going to wind up in sand, and I think I better just stop making sand jokes while I'm behind. So, see you guys next week. Hope you enjoyed. Leave your comments below, and we'll continue doodling with purpose.